If you're a DM and you've ever killed off a player's favorite character, show them a little sympathy and give them a memorial monument. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make this small monument. This is very easy to make. This is another very simple project and also very inexpensive. And it uses nothing more than this small cube, wooden cube, and a template that I'm going to provide you for the top part of the monument. And on this monument, I've got a plastic printed or 3D printed plaque. If you don't have a 3D printer, you can always cut the plaque shape out of cardboard and glue it on. It doesn't have to necessarily have lettering on it, although I'm going to be doing lettering. I think I'm going to do RIP, rest in peace, um, just as a generic one. Um, and also I'll be printing the top cap here. Um, again, any small, small trinket item could be glued on top as decoration, but I'm going to print a small pyramid or a small, I don't know, maybe a half sphere or something to cap it. So let's get started and see how this is made. The template for this project comes with three of these pyramid shapes per page. And again, I'll include the I'll, I'll include the link to download this in the description for this episode. But you'll want to print it out. I'm printing it out on cardstock. You could print it out on regular paper. You could even cut it out and then trace it onto a heavier material like chipboard or maybe the cardboard that comes from a cereal box. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to paint the block in this black before I assemble it because I've made a few of these uh, before and the one thing I didn't like was there's some nooks and crannies uh, between you know when this goes on the on the cube there's some nooks and crannies that are very hard to get into and one other thing you're going to want to do to this is obviously um, fill it with something now, I fill mine with a variety of things. When I first started making these, I would glue it all together and then I would stuff used sponges that I, I did uh, sponge painting. I would cut them up into little fragments. I would put them in here and with some hot glue and it would make it nice and sturdy. Now what I've been doing is just some aluminum foil. I just crunch up some aluminum foil, kind of squeeze it and shape it in my hand so it goes up in there and it's been doing just fine. So um, I'm going to go ahead and fold these last few tabs down and then I'm going to paint the, the template black and I'm going to paint the, uh, the, uh, the pattern black and I'm going to paint the cube black. And you don't have to go heavy on the cardstock because it's thinner paper. Uh, just put a couple dabs down and spread it around. It'll do just fine. Um, it just has to have a, a flat black on it just for something for priming purposes. But there we go, that's the, um, that's the pattern right there. And that's good enough, a little bit extra right there. And now the cube. The black paint has dried and now I'm going to use this thing called Rainy Day Gray. And I'm going to use it to do the first round of sponge painting here. I've got a wet sponge and this is just me. What I like to do is I like to damage the sponge a little bit. I, I don't leave it as a square. I just sort of chop it a little bit. And I do that mainly because I've just found that it gives a it makes it where I don't accidentally leave a pattern, um, you know, some sort of repeating pattern. But um, I'm also one of those that I do this just like dry brushing. I try to get as much of the gray off as I can, um, just because, you know, it's easier to put more on, but if you put too much on at the start, you just never know. So let's take a look. And I'm just turning my wrists, you know, just trying to keep the, uh, trying to keep the pattern random, uh, just just going around. And basically, I just, going into, I just keep going until I'm sort of happy with it. I'm going for a marbly look, which I actually like that. I, that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna try to repeat this pattern, 
on the block. And again, I'm trying to get as much paint off this sponge as I can. I just don't like to have too much on it. But let's take a look. There we go. Not too bad. And I think I'm going to go back over it because I'm seeing that it's not as... Yeah, I want it a little bit heavier. That's about right. And also, I accidentally made the mistake and set it down there. But that's okay. And yeah, I like that. And then I'll do the top. And the top has got a rough surface, so it's, it's gonna have to go a little bit more. I'm gonna let that dry a good bit, and then I'll assemble it, uh, put some aluminum foil in here for, for uh, strength, and then glue it all together. The paint is dry, so I'm going to use tacky glue to seal the pattern up here for the top pyramid. And remember, I pre-folded this, so it should go together fairly easy. And with tacky glue, sometimes you just have to hold it for a few seconds to let it let it get uh, let it get attached real well. And what I'm doing is I'm going to get the edge lined up, and I smeared the glue. I'm going to wipe it down. I'm going to keep wiping it so it doesn't damage the edge here. But I've compressed the pattern a little bit just so the tab will glue a little better. See how I did that? Now you can see it along the edge. It'll dry a little clear. And if I find that the um, if I find that the gap here doesn't look right, I can always get some paint and do some touch up with it. But right now it's looking pretty good. There we go. Just like that. Now I'm going to go time lapse um, in just a second. But what I'm going to do next is glue this top flap down. And then I'm going to get some aluminum foil and fill this, fill the uh, the monument top up. So it's going to go kind of like that. I've got uh, some small sheets of aluminum foil that I've torn here. And you don't need a lot of aluminum foil. You do not need a lot of it to fill this up. And also when you're bundling the aluminum up to stuff inside, you don't want to squeeze it super tight. You don't want this super compressed. You want to loosely do it initially. And then you want to start forming it in the shape of the, the pyramid, and which means a flat portion on top here and then sort of an angle down. So again, it's starting to get tight, but I can tell that it's gonna fit inside there at least. And then just do a test fit. Yeah, it goes up in there, and you don't want the sides bulging, but if it does, you can squeeze it just a little bit. Don't, you know, you don't wanna damage your glue joint, but if you squeeze it just a little bit, this is pretty, this is pretty solid. It's, the aluminum is in there, and as you can see, I've just got a little bit left to do here. So I'm gonna do that now and tear your sheets in smaller quantities so you can use the minimum amount. I see roughly how much I need to fit in there. So I'm going to Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, it's strong. There's some soft portions of the of the paper. I mean if somebody grip if somebody grips this with their hand and crushes it you're not gonna be able to do much about that. But this gives it enough resistance that you could pick it up by the pyramid part here and not worry about the paper crushing. But it's pretty strong, and so I'm pretty happy with that. So next, I'm going to fold the flaps down and glue this to the top. When you're ready to glue the pyramid onto the base, one thing you're gonna to wanna to do is angle the, the tabs sort of up. Don't push them down in. You want, to, you want to have them at an angle so that when you put the glue on and you push down, they're going to resist and try to, you know, they'll try to adhere to the wood block as best, uh, as best it can.
So what I'm doing now in Tinkercad is I have a large gray block that represents the larger base of my monument. And I've dropped a red cube on the work plane and I'm going to size it down. This represents the plaque that will be glued onto the front of the monument. Now I'm, I'm not making it completely flat. It's about maybe a sixteenth of an inch uh, tall. And I'm going to add another uh, cube. I drag another cube out here and I'm going to flatten it down. I'm going to turn this into negative space or using the whole object and I'm going to merge these two. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to, it's going to make a lip around the plaque. Uh, it's going to hollow out the solid, uh, solid rectangle. So when I'm happy with the placement of it, all I've got to do is select both objects. Right here what I'm doing is just getting the depth uh, of the lip or the indentation. So I select them both, I, I click the group button, and as you can see here I'm zooming in, there's a little lip that goes all around the plaque. Now the next thing I need to do is just see what it looks like on front on the front of the gray cube. So I'm going to shrink it down just a little bit here because I can tell it's too big. I also need to rotate it so that it is vertical. Uh, I'm going to use the built-in Tinkercad tool here to rotate it vertically, 90 degrees. Then, let's see, I need to put it in front of the block and raise it up just a little bit. There we go. And then I'm going to push it back and just see how it looks. And that's perfect. That's a great size. Now, I could spend a little more time on this and maybe give it rounded corners, but I'm, I'm happy with the way it looks. Next thing I'm going to do is I need to put the plaque uh, back down, uh, laying, laying horizontally, and I use the rotate tool to go 90 degrees again. I also lower it back down to the work plane. Um, now that I've got the plaque the size I want, I need to add some text to it. And I'm going to add RIP, rest in peace. So I go in here to the text tool and I drop a text item or a text object on. And all you have to do here is just type in what you want. So right here I'm typing RIP and it spells it out. Now you can obviously see it's way too big. So I'm going to shrink it down just a little bit. And I move it near the plaque, and I can see it's still too big, so I shrink it down a little more. Then I merge it, and the P is touching the right edge, so I'm just going to shrink it down just a little bit more. And next I need to center the word RIP, or the letters RIP, with the plaque. So I select both objects, the rectangle and the letters RIP, and I go up and I use the Align button, and I use them to align them along the center axis. Now what I've done is I've added a star, but you can see the star is not quite angled properly, so I'm just going to rotate it a little bit, straighten it out. It's also too big for the plaque, so I'm going to shrink it down just a little bit more. When I drag it in there, you can see it's, it's kind of hidden, so I need to raise it up just a little bit, which is what I do here. And um, made a little mistake there, fixed it. And I put it right where it needs to go, but I, I still need to center it, so I'm going to select all the objects and use the Align button one more time to align the three objects, the RIP, the star, and the plaque. I'm going to delete the gray cube because I don't need to print that. The only thing I have left to do is add the cap that will go on top of the monument. So I'm going back to the basic shapes here, and I'm going to choose the pyramid object. I drag it out there. Now I want the pyramid, the cap, to be small, so I'm going to make sure it's it's less than half an inch, which is about the distance I have on the top of the monument. And that looks to be about right, right there. I can also rotate the view and play with the height a little bit, or the, uh, the, the, yeah, the height of the object. Here I'm playing with it, stretching it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it sort of semi-flat. And the 3D printer will print the objects exactly as they appear on the work plane. So I'm going to move them closer together just so it saves some time in the 3D, print in the 3D printing when that happens. And the last step is to export the STL file and save it to my computer. Now, when I save it to my computer, I connect my computer to my 3D printer and I start the print job. And as you can see right here, the 3D printer is just going along. This took about six minutes to print, um, which is actually quite long considering these were two small objects. But again, a newer 3D printer could probably knock this out in a minute or two, but I have an older printer, so I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. But here it goes, it's finishing up the printer and we're done. After printing out the little plaque and the top that will go on top of the monument here, I gave them a coat of metallic solid bronze, but as you can see it's very shiny. So all I'm going to do right now is just give it a wash, a black wash. Hopefully that'll dull it down just a little bit. 
And after that, I'm going to glue the plaque and the top uh, on, and that will be the end of the monument. The last thing I'm going to do to the monument is do is add some uh, highlights to the edges. So I've got a wet sponge here, and again, I'm just going to damage the edges a little bit so it's not a perfect square. And I've selected for the color, it's called Heather Gray. It's a very, very light gray, almost a taupe. And I'm hoping to just get a little bit on the edges. And again, as I sponge painted the whole monument, I'm trying to get as much paint off of this as I can. I really don't want a lot on there. So I'm just gonna hit the edges. It's a little too light, so I'm gonna Try to get some of that off. Still too heavy. Still too heavy. The wet sponge really holds the paint, so I'm trying to get as much off as I can. Yeah, that's a little better. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, but it's definitely highlighting the the edges of the monument, giving them a giving them a little contrast there. And just wipe it off the uh, I'll just wipe it off the bronze there, and then finally I'm going to get the edges here. A little too heavy there, but that's okay. It'll dry a little bit. And I thought about doing the uh, the the plaque, but then I decided no, it's bronze. It wouldn't probably wouldn't go that route with the color. And then the final thing is I'll just give occasionally just some random. Hits a bit. It's almost almost completely gone now, which is fine. And I'll do the bottom edge just just because. All right. Oh, I like that. That looks good. Yeah, getting the edges definitely definitely helped. There you are, the completed monument. And that's it for the very simple monument, or we'll call it a memorial monument. If you're a DM and you'd like to make one of these for a player or all your players, if you do a total party kill, TPK, you might need five or six of these things. But here it is, completed monument. And I just wanted to show you a few options. This is one my son made, he's nine. He put the, the, the his first initial on it, and he painted it uh, just plain gray, a very uh, very smooth gray. He hasn't done any texture on it yet. Um, this one may look look similar, but there this one's slightly lighter in color, a lighter marbling that I did. And then finally, this is the original one, and you'll notice I have a base around it right here that uh, I just glued. Um, originally, when I put that on, I thought it would be a good idea. The the cube is heavy enough that this thing sits fine but um, you know if you want to put a put a flat base on it like this go right ahead but these make great little um, great little objects for your table for preventing line of sight or you know blocking line of sight um, great obstacles to hide behind great obstacles to tip over um, also like I said the original idea for these was something that I could give my players uh, after I killed one of their characters off um, I keep I keep a few of these in my bag now, and if a character dies, you know they get the memorial monument. So I hope you liked this one. Again, another very cheap, very uh, inexpensive, and easy to do project. Just a couple things. Um, I will put the template for the top here uh, in the download in the uh, description, and of course the cube was I think I bought like five or six of them for a few dollars. And again, if you don't have a 3D printer. Uh, you know, just a just a cardboard piece to, to represent a plaque would, would be fine. 
Um, I did have somebody email me and ask me um, if I knew, you know, they asked me about 3D printers, you know, a lot of questions about, you know, what's the cheapest one, what's the most expensive one, are, are there places that have 3D printers you can use, and the answer to that is yes. Um, you may want to check with your public library, and the reason I say that is a lot of public libraries these days have laser, uh, have uh, 3D printers, uh, not laser cutters yet, 3D printers, and they make them available to, you know, uh, people who who are, are, I guess, members of the library. Um, my library does have them. I live outside the city limit, so I have to pay a $25 a year fee to use my public library. But if I didn't have a 3D printer, $25 for you know access to books, um, but also access to the 3D printer, that's not a bad option. And there are online services such as Ponoco, P-O-N-O-K-O, and Shapeways, and what's the other one? i.materialize.com. Those are all great websites that will print things for you. Now, granted, you have to, um, you know, wait a few days or weeks or whatever, depending on the material. But like i dot materialize, they can print in plastics, metals, ceramics, you name it. They've got all kinds of materials. I think they'll even print in carbon fiber these days. So if you want something really durable, but um, check with your check with your public library. The other thing you may want to do, depending on your the size of the city or town you live in, is uh, if you've not heard of something called a makerspace. A makerspace is kind of like a gym. Uh, people pay pay a fee to join it, and then they have access to tools. And a lot of times, the makerspaces will have tools such as laser cutters, 3D printers, CNC machines, uh, tools that that make it you, you know that could, can give you um, the training to. The, the, the makerspace will give you the training, and then the makerspace will give you access to the tools. So check your public library, check to see if you have a makerspace nearby, and if you don't, uh, the final thing I'll say about 3D printing is there are some very inexpensive 3D printers out there, usually around the $200 mark. Uh, I don't really have any experience with them. I've seen some of them in use, and they seem fine. The difference would be that they might print a little, print a little slower and the quality of the print may not be as good as the higher end ones. The printer I have is about three years old. Uh, I paid about 700 for it at the time. I was writing a book on it, so it was a business expense. But three years from, you know, here it is three years going on and it still runs, it, it prints what I need. Um, you know, it doesn't compare to some of the newer printers that are out there for, this, for the price I paid. But, you know, it, it does what I need lets me print out little things like this for, for my games. So if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. I hope you liked this project. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. Um, I'm just starting this channel, so again, I'm gonna start with some simple projects, but I am gonna move up with some more advanced projects. So stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.